Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stefan Ash, and today I am back here to explain another menu in Final Fantasy XIV. In a previous video, I actually explained the crafting menu, which I will uh, put right up here or somewhere right there. And today I actually wanted to go over the gathering menu. So the gathering menu is not gonna be as extensive in my personal opinion as the crafting menu was. But there are some things that took me a long time to find and I couldn't really figure out where to get these things um, without a little bit of research. So hopefully I can save you some time and show you how to unlock everything in the gathering menu. If you like these kind of videos, you can boop that like button down below and make sure to subscribe. That will really help out my brand new channel. And without further ado, let's jump into the video. The first thing we see when we open up the gathering menu is that this only includes miner and botanist. Fishing will have a separate menu that will not be covered in this video, but perhaps in a future video. Let's also go over the gathering and perception stats. Gathering is related to the percentage chance of actually collecting the item and perception stats relate to the chance of it being high quality when gathering. So basic knowledge is the higher the gathering and perception you have, the easier it will be to collect high quality materials. The first section in the gathering menu is gathering items from 1 to 80. In the level based items, there are a few things to take note of when looking over this section. If you notice the word hidden next to an item, this means that you're up against a little RNG in finding the material on that node. It will not be there 100% of the time, but there is a way around this with the minor botanist skill Luck of Mountaineer, which uncovers hidden items after the second high quality chain. Even though it's still a little of a pain to do, you can uncover hidden items much more regularly this way. The next symbol you'll notice is the white square box next to an item. This means this item is a collectible which has a separate gathering menu when trying to collect these items, which we will go over later in the video. The next symbol we'll cover is the question marks next to an item. This indicates that this is based on the server time when it will spawn. You can use popular websites to search for the times just by Googling the item itself and it will tell you the two times it spawns during the 24 hour server period. Some of the level 50 items only pop up once a day for an extended time, but most have a twice a day spawn period. I want to emphasize this is based on game time and not real life time. So make sure you have your server time clicked on so you're not missing the node spawn windows. The last symbol is the clock symbol next to the location in the gathering menu. This means that it is an ephemeral node item which spawn at a four hour time window. Technically, ephemeral nodes don't have their own subsection, but I will cover them in a little more detail at the end of the video since they are so important. As you can see, there is quite a few different symbols, but it makes more sense once you start going through it. I myself keep a spreadsheet of all the important spawns and timings for all the current gathering items that I'm working on. Before moving on to the special recipes tab, let's go over currency. Similar to crafting, we have yellow gatherer scripts and white gatherer scripts. Yellow is pretty much everything that is not max level, so as of right now, 50 to 79, and white scripts are for endgame materials and turn-ins at level 80 through the appropriate vendor. Okay, now that that's covered, let's move on. Under the special recipes tab is where we're going to see a long list of folklore subsections. When actually doing the research for this video, I learned of a new way to obtain all of these tombs of folklore that I was not aware of initially. So with jealous bitterness, I will tell you the very easy way to get these tombs. You can travel to the Foundation or Kugane and go to Rowena's representative, which is labeled with golden money sack over her head. Once there, you can go under the gathering supplies and then choose folklore. Here is all the folklore tombs except for the Shadowbringers folklore. You didn't think it'd be that easy, did you? Either way, you can just farm a few yellow scripts, which I will explain later in the collectible section, and turn those in for the appropriate miner and botanist tombs. Why do you need these, you ask? Other than for the disease we call completionism, 
If you would like to craft the special master recipes that I went over in my crafting video and collect all the material yourself, you will need these tombs to do just that. The last tomb, Vrantic Folklore, is just a little more grindy than that because it wouldn't be an MMO if it were that easy. Before jumping in, I want to say that it's important that you unlock all the crafting quests and gathering quests up until Shadowbringers so you can have access to the House of Representatives in each expansion. If you're not able to access a vendor, most likely you did not complete the short quest chain to unlock them. Okay, on to the last tomb. You will travel to Yumor and talk to the House of Splendor's vendor. She will have these tombs for trade-in for 40 regional folklore tokens each. You get these tokens by way of script exchange from the appropriate vendor. Under the yellow gatherer's script exchange level 70 items is where you'll find these tokens for 100 yellow scripts each. Assuming you want to get all three for Miner, Botanist, and Fisher, this will require 12,000 scripts with each one costing 4,000 yellow scripts. A little bit of a grind, but there is an effective way to grind all of these yellow scripts if you map out the times that they spawn. That is how you get all the folklores in the gathering menu. Moving on to the Ishgardian restoration tab, which always sounds like Wingardium Leviosa <laughs> to me. Little Harry Potter buff here. Okay, Ishgardian restoration is unlocked in a series of quests in Heaven's Ward expansion at the Foundation. Once unlocked, you'll have access to the Firmament. Under the menu, you'll see Geological Resources. As of the current patch out, 5.45, we have received grade 4 materials that we are able to collect for current rebuilding of Ishgard. Here in the firmament, you will unlock the Diadem. Quick note here that this is a great way to level up your gatherers as well as potentially level up your crafters all in one place. I go over that a little more in my crafting video. In the diadem, you'll have access to only gatherers. Once in, you can travel from node to node, collecting the correlating leveled material. While collecting, you will gain energy for an etheric cannon, which allows you to pretty much blast monsters minding their own business for additional materials. When you're ready to leave, you can just click on leave duty in the duty finder. Once back, you'll have to approve your materials for Sky Builder scripts and for the ability to craft with them. You always want to approve your Sky Builder materials unless trying to sell them on the market board. Sky Builder scripts are the currency of Ishgardian Restoration, which you can turn in for cool mounts, materia, furniture, etc. A lot of crafter and gatherer focused players will say that this is the end game for crafters and gatherers. Next, we have Sky Steel Tools. They are like relic battle weapons, but for gathering. I have personally not unlocked these yet, but there is a whole subchain of quests and grindy gathering you'll have to do to unlock these, and maybe I'll do it one day and make a video about it. The last thing on the menu is the collectibles. This is the main way of getting yellow scripts and white scripts for turn-ins. To make it even more complex, some collectibles have spawn times as well and are not always available. Again, I highly recommend creating a spreadsheet for the spawns of yellow and white script collectibles. It saves so much time to just reference the sheet when you're ready to get some scripts or you want to get a specific collectible. Okay, let's talk about the gathering collectible menu. When gathering, you'll have a separate menu that pops up and will have access to three different abilities, Scour, Brazen Prospector, and Meticulous Prospector. These abilities will raise the collectability of items to which you then can gather that item at the desired collectability. You will have Scrutiny, which is just used before a skill to boost its collectability increase. You also have Integrity, which is pretty much just the gathering attempts. Be aware that you only have so many skills you can use before the gathering fails, so keep an eye on the integrity of the item. This is not a rotational video, but basically you just use these skills to try to get to max collectability to which you then use the skill collect. You then turn these collectibles into the appraiser in the major cities to get yellow scripts and white scripts. Once you have the scripts, you can exchange those for all sorts of rewards and other items to further you on your gathering journey.
The very last thing I want to cover is the difference between all the items you can gather. In the current patch of 5.45, I narrow down my gathering to what's most important to me during this patch. So if we reference the worksheet, you see we have yellow scripts, white scripts, level 84 star materials, level 83 star materials, and ephemeral nodes. I have all these separated out to easily reference once I am in need of a particular item or want to do some script farming. Ephemeral nodes are the last on my list, but equally important. There are long four hour server time spawn windows for gathering. They are collectibles and the importance of them are for ethereal reduction. You can unlock ethereal reduction by speaking to the NPC in Mordona and completing the quest no longer a collectible. Once completed, you can collect items from the ephemeral nodes as long as you have the appropriate gathering and perception stats. Once collected, you can reduce them for tons of crystals and clusters of different elements and ethereal sands, which are used in endgame crafting. You will need near max collectability to get the endgame ethereal sands, but totally worth the grind. So that was the gathering menu. I shouldn't slap like that. So that was the gathering menu explained. Leave a comment down below, uh, something that you didn't realize or you found out from this video. And if you have any more suggestions or ideas of what kind of videos you'd like me to do, explanation videos about currency, about menus, about something that you've never really taken the time to look up or maybe have a little trouble finding, you can let me know down below. And I hope you guys all have a great week and I'll see you all next Friday. Bye.